You know, the really cool thing about art is you can carve, paint, and sculpt whatever you want. So if you like sunsets, well, you paint a sunset. If you like pottery, go ahead and make a vase or maybe a bowl. And if you like heavy machinery, just get a block of wood and carve a few dump trucks and backhoes. As a matter of fact, Sean is with a man who does just that. Sean, are you, are you telling me that he made what you're holding in your hand? Jimmy, he made every piece of this 950 loader by hand, but probably the coolest part is it all moves. Look at this. It, it, it's all functional. And when I say he, I'm talking about George Collinson. He's the man who makes these amazing pieces of art. George, thanks for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. So I, how did you get into woodworking? Woodworking, it was a high school thing. I was in a vocational class, uh, and I love wood. So I've never forgotten it, and I've been in it for years. And then I, I guess as life progressed, you just kept making things. Uh, yes, uh, uh, under pressure because we had a family, big family. And naturally, you work, but you don't make enough money. So I made furniture and did everything I could possibly do to save, them, save a buck. Uh, so how did you get into making model construction equipment? My wife uh, got kidney cancer, and she was taking Sutan as a medication, and it knocked the devil out of her. And I couldn't be, I couldn't leave the house. Uh, I, most of the time I had to stick around. So I had to find something to do, so I just asked myself, why don't I make some, some small replicas of the equipment that I had run? And that's how I got into it. And that's what I think is one of the coolest things is you have actually operated every piece of machinery and then some that you've made here. Yes. Uh, all by hand. What goes into making something like this with such great detail? Memory. I mean, there's the, you, the, I could get prints for some of them, but it wouldn't be the same manufacturer. So I would have to adapt to what I remembered. And most of it, running it, the memory is pretty good. Yeah, so you actually sat in the driver's seat, so it's really cool. He has a bunch of plans, but if you were saying if it doesn't match your memory, then you get to change it, and that's really the cool thing about working with your hands. And it was era practice, and a lot of, it's a whole box of stuff that I made that didn't work or didn't look right, and we would, I would go back, and maybe I would leave it for a day or two and work hard to see if I could get it come up the right way. And they did. They came out pretty close. Uh, I want to show you guys. This is actually what uh, George starts with. He starts with scrap wood. And then from there, um, we're in his, his shop down here. And this shop is awesome. I would love to hang out with you down here. But from there, he takes it and he, he makes the wheels. He makes the tracks. He makes everything. As I knock some things down <laughs> over here, I'm sorry. Makes everything by hand. Yeah. And so these are really cool. You have them on display. What was your favorite piece to operate, and then what's your favorite piece to make? Well, this would be my favorite piece to operate. Mm -hmm. uh, that's your finished equipment right there for ball, uh, soccer fields, football fields. That's what finishes it off. Uh, the best one to make, that's out in the other room, and that's uh, similar to this, but it's called a, a sheep's foot. There's a picture of it over there. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the most difficult. But uh, that does a real good job. Uh, last question, I gotta ask you. You don't just make these models, though. You make uh, furniture and things I've like made that. beds, I've made cradles, I've made cabinets. All these cabinets in here are made. <laughs> Everything in here is made. Most of the stuff you've made in your home. How long does it take to make this? Well, that one probably three months. Three months three of months. hard work, detail. Now, these not, tires, every, not every hour. Not every no, hour. No. no, you don't work you're, on them nonstop. I'm, no, I'm not getting paid to do this. No, you're not. You're, this is a hobby, and I need to spend time with your wife. But I just, these tires look like real tires. It, it is um, it is amazing, George. I just thank you for sharing this story with us. Thank you for telling us how you actually made these. And Jimmy and Lisa, I want to show you these. Uh, George was kind enough to make these for us oh, to wow. put in our kitchen so that, you know, when you make whatever, hot a hot pan or you, you get... Um, you know, a pot. We can put them on here. We don't have to worry about burning uh, our countertop. So thank you so much. You're quite George. Yeah, I actually made two, um, which is it's good for us so that we don't burn our hands anymore. <laughs> How about that? So, what's he doing next, John? Has he got something he's working on now? 
Are you working on anything? Uh, you know, he yes. has this over here, which is he he's working on. But the cool thing is, he was saying he was making it, and if it didn't work out, then he's got to make some tweaks to it. Yeah, here uh, it's obviously it just didn't match what I wanted, so I just cut the top off and start over. Cut the top off, start over. Uh, it's no big deal, but it's uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm eager to see what this turns out to be. I'm sure it will be amazing. Thank you so much, George. You're quite welcome, Jimmy and Lisa. Very cool.